we're watching an action and sci-fi movie called Corrective Measures. Let's get into it. Trapped in a parking lot, Jack is getting beaten by a gang full of mutants and superhumans. His failure to wipe out an entire family, leaving only one guy left alive, marks him for death. Someone calling himself Payback shows up and kills most of the gang. Joey is bulletproof, so a mutant hides behind him. Joey and Payback engage in combat, during which Payback fractures all of Joey's bones. The mutant charges at him, but Payback knocks him down and shoves his thumps in the mutant's eyes. Payback is standing over Jack, saying that he couldn't let them kill him. Jack thanks him, but Payback says that he wanted to kill him himself because Jack killed his daughter. Payback kills him, and the police show up, arresting him. News broadcasts detail cities crumbling due to riots, while a world plunged into chaos by radiation results in widespread loss of life. The survivors either transform into mutants or gain superhuman powers, plunging the world into uncontrollable turmoil with little hope for solutions. The broadcasters engage in a conversation with Warden Walton, the overseer of a prison specially designed for superhumans and mutants. They accuse Walton of violating human rights inside the prison, but Walton scoffs and says that those rights only apply to humans, not to freaks. The discussion shifts to the prison's most notorious inmate, named the Lobe, who possesses mind control abilities. However, the use of ankle bracelets prevents the inmates from exercising their powers. Later, Walton's assistant, Felicia, informs him of a new batch of inmates' arrival to the prison. Among them is Diego, and behind him, we see Payback on the same bus. When they arrive at the prison, Payback gets off the bus and is immediately threatened by another inmate named Diamond Jim. Officer Morales explains the prison rules while mocking Diego for having empathy as his superpower. Officer Breeze approaches Payback, who startles him. Morales responds by hitting Payback, revealing her own superpower super strength. Captain Brody requests Payback to step back, and when he doesn't do that, Brody electrocutes him. Payback reunites with Diamond Jim, and Jim reveals that he is part of the gang that Payback recently wiped out. The two inmates start to fight, and meanwhile, Diego meets Gordon, who takes him under his wing. As Payback gains the upper hand in the fight, he prepares for a final punch, but the guards intervene and electrocute him. Morales asserts dominance over Payback and hits him multiple times. Gordon shares that his superpower is manipulating electricity, causing chaos among blocks, but he was apprehended by the police while he was asleep. He advises Diego to raise his hand and visualize blocking out the fences, creating the illusion of being free. He gives Diego a tour, during which they encounter Darius, a mutant who does not seem to like Gordon. The conversation shifts to the lobe, and Gordon visibly tenses up as they are standing right in front of his cell. He says that the lobe becomes an unstoppable force once his ankle bracelet is removed. Felicia signals that it's time, and we see the lobe being escorted throughout the prison. He's placed in a dark room, where an anonymous speaker tests him to see if he can maybe get paroled. The lobe offends the anonymous speaker, and the speaker rejects the parole request. Warden Walton arrives, demanding all the Loeb's money, or he'll face consequences. After this, Walton talks with Felicia, revealing his retirement plans. In the medical bay, Dr. Isabel treats Payback's injuries when Diego gets in to clean the trash. Morales displays unexplained irritation towards Diego, but Isabel comforts him and introduces herself. Their conversation turns to an inmate with regenerative abilities before Diego resumes his cleaning duties. Isabel talks with the lobe, only for Payback to burst in and choke Isabel. Payback turns his aggression on the lobe, but Diego gets to him. Diego surprisingly holds his ground until a guard arrives to defuse the situation. During lunch, fellow inmates express their respect for Diego, giving him pudding cups for putting Payback in solitary and saving the lobe. Gordon says that everyone loves him now, when Darius gets there, and wants Diego to come with him. They arrive at the lobe's cell, where he thanks Diego. He then requests a favor from Diego. To cover a cafeteria shift in place of Darius, who's dealing with carpal tunnel. Diego says that he will think about it and leaves. Brody overhears Diego's conversation with the lobe and reports it to Walton. He suggests launching an investigation, but Walton assures him that isn't necessary. Felicia cautions against getting entangled with the lobe, but Walton disagrees, claiming the lobe holds no power within the prison. Walton then tells Felicia that she should support him, hinting that she could potentially be the new warden when he retires, but alternatively, he could influence her career in a less favorable direction. Later that evening, the guards plan a poker night, but Brody declines, wanting to spend more time with his wife. Meanwhile, Isabel is in the parking lot, still recovering from Payback's attack. 
In the morning, she is in the medical area with Payback, where he expresses the belief that every inmate is an animal except for himself. Time passes, and we see Officer Breeze delivering food to the lobe. It's time for Gordon to request parole, and he gets into the dark room. The anonymous voice asks what lessons he learned, but after Gordon answers, it is clear the voice isn't satisfied with his response and denies his parole. After this, Diego and Gordon are in the cafeteria, where Darius passes a broken fork to Gordon and another small item to Jim. Later, Payback tries to fight with Jim, but Jim declines and says to wait for something. When most inmates are done eating, Gordon uses the broken fork to break his ankle bracelet. A guard requests backup, but Gordon takes an electrical wire and absorbs its power. He then electrocutes the guard, which results in a power outage, triggering the alarm. All the inmates are fighting, and Payback and Diamond Jim are getting ready too. However, before they can fight, the backup generator goes on, and the guards electrocute them. The guards lock everyone back in their cells, and they are trying to find Gordon. Gordon is in the medical area and tries to block out the fences with his hands, so it looks like he is free. Morales sneaks up behind him and hits him to the ground. Walton wants her to kill Gordon, so she proceeds to punch him until he's dead. The news reports the attempted escape, but state that Gordon fell to his death instead of a guard killing him. Diego talks with his wife, discussing the escape, when Morales gets there and says that Walton wants to speak with him. Walton shows him a solitary cell where time goes slower. He then goes on and wants to know why the lobe seems to have an interest in Diego. From now on, Walton wants to know everything the lobe says to Diego, or he will go to solitary. After this, Walton gets to the lobe, trying to find out his scheme. He also talks about the lobe's money that he wants and says that he has one day to make it over. The lobe responds, expressing doubts about meeting the deadline, but assuring Walton that he will find a way. The lobe also asks for the Wi-Fi password, but Walton denies the request. Felicia, Brody, and Breeze get to the generator and have a heated argument about Gordon's death. They locate the problem, and Brody suggests calling an electrician. However, Breeze insists he can fix it himself with the assistance of his friends. Brody and Felicia talk about the retirement of the warden and express that they both want his position. Later, Breeze distributes mail throughout the prison and delivers a letter to the lobe. The lobe gets on his tablet and connects to the Wi-Fi network. Then we see Breeze repairing the generator with the help of his friends. Felicia gets to Walton, inquiring if he has made a decision regarding her potential promotion, but Walton says that he is still deciding. In the prison yard, Payback and Jim reunite, and Jim says that his time for action will come. Diego converses with the Lobe, questioning the purpose of the earlier favor. The Lobe wants Diego to be patient, saying that he will be a free man soon. The following day, Felicia gets to know that it will take more time to determine if she will become the next warden. She gets to Walton, where she complains about Brody, when Brody himself gets there. The two have a heated argument before Walton shuts them down. Brody talks with Morales, sharing his doubts about becoming the warden. He then approaches Jim, advising him to be on his best behavior tomorrow, as it is the warden's final day. After Brody leaves, Jim says that he just wants five minutes with him alone, Brody and Breeze perform a final check on the generator, and when they are finished, Breeze attaches a small device to it. It's Walton's last day, and he starts it off by peeing on a car. Morales informs Brody that Walton wants to see him, and Felicia is there as well. The warden delivers the news that Brody gets his job, leaving Felicia disheartened. Later, Walton is in the Loeb's cell, where the Loeb sends Walton all his money. Meanwhile, Diego is in the medical area and says that he has a shift there, Payback and Jim are ready to fight, so the guards try to electrocute them, but it doesn't work. The lobe then presses a button, disabling everyone's ankle bracelets. All the inmates start to fight, but Diego has extreme pain as he absorbs the feelings and suffering from the inmates due to his superpower. Walton gets informed about the situation and wants to leave the cell, but he's trapped because there are no guards to release him. The inmates are killing all the guards one by one, and Brody rushes to the generator to reset the system. The Loeb claims to have bribed some guards, but Walton remains unfazed, asserting that the money is now under his control. As Brody searches for the place to reset it, Jim arrives on the scene. Brody tries to hide, but is eventually discovered. He tries to fight, but Jim easily wins. Jim also reveals that the Loeb bribed Breeze to place a device on the generator, letting all the inmates' powers come back. As Jim prepares to kill Brody, Brody destroys a pipe, electrocuting Jim. 
Back in the cell, Walton says that despite the lobe's ankle bracelet no longer working, something was put in his food to stop him from using his powers, but the lobe says that he hasn't eaten the food since his parole request. He then switches bodies and knocks Walton unconscious. Brody successfully resets the generator, deactivating everyone's powers, and Diego's condition improves. Felicia talks with who she thinks is the warden, but actually talks with the lobe, who informs her that she will become the new warden. Meanwhile, Walton is mistaken for the lobe and gets put into solitary. Breeze is dead, along with numerous inmates, and Payback is sitting on top of his fallen victims. Diego gets to Isabel with the news that he is getting transferred to a regular prison, since his superpower is not deemed a danger to others. They say their farewells, and even Morales says goodbye. Brody leaves the job to spend more time with his family, and we see Diego getting ready for his new prison. Darius gets paroled because he completed his sentence and stayed out of the riot. The lobe gets there and wants Darius to get in. They get off the property, and Darius asks if he can still call him the lobe, even though he is in Walton's body. Thank you for watching the movie Corrective Measures. Please consider liking and subscribing if you think it is worthy.